In this video, we're going to talk about rendering rich text from Highgraph's Rich Text Editor with additional classes for use with Tailwind CSS. The Rich Text Editor allows content creators to create whatever content they need and then gives developers the tools they need to render it. That rich text data can be consumed as HTML, Markdown, or JSON. While it may be easy to just select HTML or Markdown, what happens if we need to add additional information like Tailwind classes? Let's dive in. So to start, we have a very simple site built in 11D with high graph data. It's so simple that we don't even have any styles. We're using Highgraph's rich text editor to create this experience and then getting the HTML that that editor provides by default. Let's go ahead and add some Tailwind CSS to style things for us. For this, we'll just use the CDN, though you can use your own implementation if you want. When we go back to the site, we can see that the page title is fine, but all the body HTML is unstyled. That's because Tailwind has CSS resets built in. Tailwind is also a class-based system, and since our text is coming from the rich text field, there are no classes added along the way. That's what we're going to fix here today by rendering it differently. To start, we'll head over to where the data is being pulled in. In this case, it's by an 11 data file. All this would also work in your front end or site generator of choice. In our GraphQL query, we're getting the content field from our rich text editor, but only getting the HTML child. In addition to this pre-rendered HTML, let's also grab the JSON representation. Now that that data is available, we can serialize it into customized HTML. To start that process, let's install and require or import the AST to HTML string method from the rich text HTML renderer package. Then we can put it to work. Currently, our module is exporting the raw post data straight from HighGraph. We need to update this to add the new HTML. To do that, we'll map over the posts array and run it through a function called add content. We'll take that post data and isolate the children array off the JSON object from our content. This is the data we need to work with. We create a new variable named rendered that will run the content through the AST to HTML string method. Once that method does its work, we can return back a modified object by spreading all the original post data and the newly created HTML string we stored as rendered. The AST to HTML string method accepts an object for its argument and we pass it the content and a set of renderers. We currently don't have any renderers, so we need to create a new object for these. Now the basic structure of this is an object with a set of methods each method having a key of the content type we want to customize the HTML for, such as an h1, h2, li, those sorts of things. The function is passed an object for its argument that contains the node information. Each node object has a children array. The children either contains more nodes from the JSON or the text for this specific node. This is important for things like unordered lists, ordered lists, and that sort of thing. Now to create a custom HTML element for each of these, we return immediately back from this method a JavaScript template literal with the HTML. In this case, an HTML tag with the proper classes for the children inside it, such as h1, h2, ul, ol, that sort of thing. Now any JavaScript will work inside these functions. So we can actually abstract out some of our common classes each of these elements will need, such as text size and color. And we can actually put those in as template literal variables that will show up in our classes. Now that each post in our new array has proper content, we can return that variable from our exported function. Again, this is an 11 syntax thing, but the concept can be used in any framework. Then we need to tell the template to use the rendered variable instead of the original HTML. Once that's in, we can refresh the page and voila, we have lovely typography for our blog post. This includes things like adding background colors to our code blocks, bullets for our unordered lists, decimals for our ordered lists, and various sizes for different types of headlines throughout all the blog posts on our site. So to recap, we stopped using the default HTML given by HighGraph and instead rendered custom HTML using the JSON that is also available with HighGraph's rich text editor. By using that, we can pass it through a series of custom HTML renderers to add things like classes to each of the type of content we want customized. 
Now, if you wanted to take this a step further, you could create custom HTML for large code blocks with something like Prism.js, or add IDs to each of your headlines for creating custom tables of content. When you treat the rich text as data, you can customize it in really any way that you need. Now, if you have any questions on this, be sure to share them in the comments below or join our Slack channel at slack.highgraph.com and ask the team or our amazing community members for help along the way.